Hello and welcome back to NHB Retro. Uh, in this episode, we are going to build a popular uh, reproduction card for the PC. Um, this is, as you can see right here, a replica of a 1990 AdLib card. This was one of the first real um, music cards, an FM synth for the uh, for the PC. Um, in its day, it was a very successful product. The real cards of these are very, very expensive. Um, but we are going to take a big old bag of parts about like that and a bunch of PCBs from our friends over at PCBWay and put this together um, into a working card. Uh, I want to thank um, PCBWay for uh, supplying the circuit boards for this uh, project. Uh, they did su supply these free of charge, uh, but this is a project I've been thinking about doing um, for a very long time. Um, so yeah, let's, um, I'll walk, I'll, I'll say a few words about PCB way and their website, and I'll walk you through the ordering process uh, for the PCBs, um, and then we'll get into constructing the board. If you aren't familiar with PCB way, uh, they offer a number of printed circuit board related services, including PCB prototyping, manufacturing, and assembly. Uh, they feature easy ordering, friendly expert assistance, and surprisingly fast turnarounds. I believe it took um, no more than seven or eight days for me to get the, the PCBs that I'm going to be using in this uh, project here uh, delivered all the way from China, so, which I feel like is really fantastic in this day and age. Um, as you can see from PCB Way's website, uh, they offer a wide variety of other services, including 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and even injection molding. Um, so whether you need a small batch of, of prototype PCBs or a full production run of fully assembled parts, PCBWay has what you need. Um, definitely check them out uh, at, at PCBWay.com. One of the features of their site that I find really cool is this shared projects uh, section that they maintain. And this is a place where um, people who have used the, the, the service to have their own PCBs made have uploaded and shared the files required uh, in order to get those PCBs made. Um, and, and it's in a searchable uh, project um, uh, organization here. So um, I, there's a lot of uh, projects on, in this section that are really great for uh, people in our hobby and, and people doing just what I'm doing today, which is um, creating a project essentially from scratch. So um, let's go to the shared projects project section right here, and I'll show you how I found um, this project that we're going to be doing today. Um, so first of all, I, I go to the PCB Way shared project section. Uh, I go to the search section, and I, I just typed in ad lib here. And, you know, right away I find uh, the project that's been shared for exactly what I wanted to do, which was recreate uh, a, re a reproduction of, of the 1990s um, Adlib card. And, and so here you can see that the person in this case has linked to the original uh, project on GitHub, which is great. You can go there and read all about it or even get the source files if you want to. Um, they even go so far as to um, providing some links of where you can get some of the um, long out of production Yamaha chips that are required. Um, and in this case, there's even a, a um, a pre-built cart over at Mouser Electronics uh, where all the parts that are generally available are already in a cart. You can just go there, buy it. Um, so for this project, um, okay, so once I had, uh, um, you know, once I knew this was what I wanted, I just added that to my cart. Now, of course, there's a slew of um, options and things you can change here. Uh, the nice thing for these projects is all that stuff that's required has already been filled in. Uh, if there's things that you want to change, um, for instance, I think I, let's see, I, I chose the color of blue for, for my uh, project. You can certainly change those really easily, but all the other things that you may not even know exactly what the, the right choices are, they're already done for you um, because this project has been done successfully by other people. And so once I was happy with that, I just uh, saved that to my cart and proceeded to, um, to get it shipped. Um, nothing could be easier uh, and you know 
like I said, basically in about a week, uh, the PCBs arrived at my door, and that's with no special expedited delivery or anything like that. Uh, that's just the way that, that they came. Um, so yeah, let's get back to the bench. We'll take a look at the PCBs, uh, and then we'll uh, get started on this build. Well, let's go ahead and check those PCBs out. Um, I believe they come in uh, five is the minimum order size, so you know keep that in mind. Um, potentially, it's a good thing to buy if you have some friends or people you know that are also interested in building the same uh, project. Um, yeah, so I mean, there it is, the blank board. Just really nice looking quality, um, very well done, um, beautiful board. It's got, uh, in, in this case, you know, the silk screening is all up to the person that made the project, but in this case, at least it's got, it doesn't have the values and labels for the chips, but each one is um, numbered with a, and then you can look at the corresponding bill of materials to see, um, yeah, what goes in that spot. So um, yeah, these look great. Um, and I believe I've <laughs> collected together all the parts I need. This is the the bag that comes from Mauser. Of course, it's <laughs> it's huge because some of these extremely tiny parts. Uh, for instance, there's the single diode that I needed, but you know they they come packaged like this. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's jump in. Um, I'll clear off uh, all the boxes and packaging and stuff, and we'll get to um, putting one of these together. All right, let's get this thing put together here. Um, I've got all the parts I needed. They're all collected up. Um, I've got the two Yamaha chips. Of course, these were, like I mentioned before, um, these are secondhand chips. You can't buy them new anymore. Um, I was able to get a few examples of each, so hopefully um, out of the, the ones I have, at, at least one set uh, or more <laughs> will be uh, genuine and working. So we're starting with the bare circuit board. Um, I like to start with the lowest profile uh, components first. Um, it makes it just easier when you're soldering the board, it doesn't get as tippy. Um, and let's see, I think the first, the first ones uh, we're gonna do are uh, the diodes. In fact, there's only one diode on this one. Um, it's this part right here, D1. Um, of course, uh, if you haven't done diodes before, uh, they are directional. Um, you just want to be um, cognizant of the fact that uh, there's a little stripe on one end of the diode, and you know the PCB itself has a, um, a little stripe in the silk screen. So let's go ahead and get this one put in um, and soldered down. And once again, I've forgotten to turn on my fan. I'll do that now. Okay, let's just... All right, let's go ahead and start getting some of the resistors in. Um, of course, these are not directional, but I do make some effort to get them all in the same direction. Uh, let's just see what we got here. Looks pretty good. So there we go. Our first resistors. We'll just. 
clip the legs off here and be ready for the next set of resistors. Up next is the 10, the 2.2K resistors. There are six of them. So here we go. All right, let's uh, go ahead and get these next two resistors um, soldered in. These are the 8.2 kilo ohm resistors. Um, let's see how this goes. So. All right, now the 12K resistor, there's only one of those. I am uh, really experimenting here with different camera angles and stuff with the, this microscope. is obviously very new to me. It's not working exactly as I had hoped. So please bear with me a bit on that. Hopefully we get some good footage here. Okay. Yeah. All right, up next, um, I think I'm going to do the sockets next. It seems like the next lowest profile. There are quite a few here. Well, relatively speaking. Uh, obviously, the main thing is to make sure that the notches line up with what's on the circuit board so that we can get the chips populated the right way around. Alright. And then to hold these in place, I'm just going to use the obligatory Painter's tape, make sure they aren't falling out. All right, ready to go. Socket number one here. I will say, if you want to take a fun day of soldering and turn it into a nightmare, do it with one of these uh, mi microscopes set up and try to try and get film it. Just gonna get the opposing legs down here.
Okay, here we are with uh, all the sockets um, installed. Again, you know, sorry for the, the video capture of, of the soldering. I'm just really struggling with this new setup that I have here, and it's a little bit less than ideal, but uh, we're getting it done. So all the solder, all the um, sockets are in. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, the capacitors. Actually, let's go ahead and get the uh, lone transistor uh, populated here, and you just want to, of course, match up the shape of the transistor with the shape of the that is indicated on the silk screen. Uh, huh. Like that. Alrighty, we're starting out with these uh, 0.1 microfarad um, uh, resistors. Okay, and here we are with all the uh, 0.1 microfarad uh, ceramic capacitors in place. Uh, there's a bunch, it's like a forest of legs back here. Um, I'm going to get those uh, soldered. All right, now we have uh, all of the uh, ceramic capacitors in, and we're going to move on to the tantalums. Now, of course, the while the ceramic capacitors uh, do not have polarity, the tantalums do. So we'll need to pay extra close attention to, you know, the, the places on the circuit board where they're clearly marked uh, plus, and uh, otherwise, yeah, they will pop when they get power through them. All right, I will bring you back when the uh, tantalums are in place. And with that, uh, all the tantalums are now in place, hopefully with the uh, correct polarity. Um, yeah, we're getting really close to the end here, guys. Um, gotta say, yeah, my camera setup has not been the best for this. Um, it's been definitely a learning experience for me. Um, okay, uh, up next, I think, let's see, we might be down to just the one electrolytic. Um, let me get that put in there, uh, which is also... Uh, a polarized part, of course, so we have to be careful about getting that um, the right way around. Uh, let me get that done, and we might be real close here. And there is the card with the uh, all the all the components uh, populated and soldered in place. I got the um, I just did these uh, the, the controls and the output here off uh, camera. Uh, the only thing left to do now is to. Drill some holes in that mounting plate. Um, 
and then get it attached and then populate the chips into it. All right, let's see here. And again, being careful to get the chips in there in the right orientation. All right. All right, that is all of the common, uh, readily available parts in there, the chips. Uh, now, let's put in the uh, Yamaha uh, the chips that are um, long out of, out of uh, production and therefore are new old, or uh, <laughs> new old stock, I wish. They are uh, salvaged, recovered, chips so uh, let's see this is the YM31 <laughs> this is the YM30148B little teeny chip goes right here and then the, the main chip here that's uh, the one that's most sought after and Hardest to come by, I guess. This is the YM3812, the heart of the card. All right. All right, well, um, there it is. It's all together. Uh, it was kind of a, a slog, honestly, just mostly because of my in, um, in unfamiliarity with the filming setup that I have here and just kind of the experimenting that I've gotten uh, that I had to do to kind of get things rolling. Um, the end bracket honestly did not come out very good. I would have, I should have um, followed the mantra of um, uh, measure twice, cut once. Um, I did not. But there it is. It's all together. Um, let's see about... Uh, getting it tested. I'm going to go over it, you know, very carefully with a magnifying glass first. Uh, and then, yeah, hopefully we can uh, uh, hear some ad-lib sounds. Okay, I've got my um, totally janky uh, 486 test computer moved out to the garage. Uh, I've got the ad-lib card, brand new ad-lib card installed. The machine powered up, nothing went pop, nothing exploded, so that's obviously a good sign. Um, let's see, I'm going to move you over here. We've got some really crappy speakers hooked up to the old display, or rather to the computer and the display is hooked up, so let's uh, play some ad-lib music. This is just the default jukebox that comes with uh, the AdLib disc. Running in glorious CGA. Uh, let's see here. Let's just go with Vivaldi for, to start out with. Actually works the again these speakers are not the best but uh, and I'm recording not direct in or anything uh, let's give a little a, a few more songs a test here
have it, a fully working um, reproduction of the 1980 or 1990 uh, AdLib card. Super fun project. I want to say again, um, thanks to PCBWay for uh, supplying the circuit boards. Um, this It was a little bit hectic getting this together and trying to film it at the same time. You probably noticed a little <laughs> frustration on my part, but in the end, it, it all worked first try. Um, pretty simple um, project as far as uh, soldering goes. Um, not really that many things to it. Probably the biggest challenge is <laughs> finding the two Yamaha chips, which that can be done, of course. eBay is a wonderful thing. Um, yeah, so uh, hope you hopefully you enjoyed following along. Um, let me know in the comments if you did. Uh, I plan to do some more um, projects like this in the future. Um, uh, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.